Hi, I'm Atul, and I am based in uh, London right now. Hi, I'm Paul, and I'm an A-level chemistry tutor based in Burnley, Lancashire, right now. Okay, so today we're looking at calculating an enthalpy of combustion using calorimetry. So basically from uh, an experiment where we burn a fuel and heat up some water and from the temperature rise of the water we can calculate the energy given out and therefore the enthalpy change. So the equation we use for this is Q equals MC delta T. And M will stand for mass, C for specific heat capacity, and delta T, the change in temperature, And it's worthwhile looking at the units for these because our specific, specific heat capacity is given in joules per gram per Kelvin. And our mass is grams. And our change in temperature is uh, Kelvin. Even if it's given in degrees C, our change in temperature will still be Kelvin. So change is the same even though the actual values on the same. And if we times them all together, we'll see that grams times joules per gram per Kelvin times Kelvin will end up in a unit of joules. So when we put our grams in here, specific heat capacity and temperature change, the answer will be given in joules, not kilojoules, which was what we want for an enthalpy change. The other thing we have to be careful of is the mass. So in the question here, a lot of students will put in the mass of 1.56 grams. Because that's the mass given in the question. But what we're interested in is the mass of water because that's what we're heating up from the combustion of the fuel. And that's what it's telling us the energy that's being given out. And Water is one gram per centimetre cubed, so we want this volume to be in centimetres cubed. And as one decimetre cubed is a thousand centimetre cubed, then our water is 250 centimetres cubed, and therefore that will equal 250 grams. So now we can put that in our equation, so Q will equal 250 times the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4.18, times the temperature change of the water, which from 292.1 to 339.4 looks to me 47.3. And then we times that together we get 49,428.5 joules but we've been asked to calculate not the energy given out the enthalpy of combustion and we know enthalpy change is kilojoules per mole. So our enthalpy change can be written as minus Q that's in kilojoules divided by the number of moles. And I actually just remember this as minus the kilojoules over the moles. And so our energy in kilojoules, so if we divide Q by a thousand, we get 
49.4285 and the number of moles this is where our mass of propanol that the fuel will where burning will come in because moles is mass over MR which is 1.56 divided by the MR of propan 1 ohm which would be 15 plus 14 plus 14 plus 17 60 and then if we put that in our calculator 49.4285 divided by 1.56 divided by 60 is 1901.9 not nine six da, 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 da. which to three significant figures one thousand nine hundred kilojoules per mole and that's the enthalpy of combustion of propan one hour. Great. So, <clears throat> presumably they will have done... Um... And just one thing, can you spot anything I've missed there, Atul? Uh, change in temperature... Jules... Um, is there a unit? It's not anything to do with units or calculation, really. So you've got the mass of the water, that's correct. Specific heat capacity of the water. Change in temperature, gives you the energy. Uh, convert that to kilojoules, divide by the number of moles. Um, anything I can think of is, a, is an assumption that not an assumption, it's a sign. Oh. It's our uh, delta H is minus oh, of Q over N. Yeah. Because this isn't, we've had a temperature rise, so it should be an exothermic reaction. And so I haven't carried on the minus sign here. So our enthalpy change is minus 1,900 kilojoules per mole. Hmm. I've just made a common mistake that students make, which is putting in, making sure the sign's correct. Yeah. The yeah, yeah, it's an exothermic reaction because the temperature yeah. goes up, so that's a, that's a useful check. And exothermic reactions have a, a negative uh, energy. I was just in my my physics brain there because that's the, the mm. physics equation, isn't it? Q equals mm. C. Delta yes, the, the Q doesn't come out as... No negative because yeah. that's the actual energy given out yeah yeah of course and, the, the uh, delta h the enthalpy change does mm. uh, and i suppose sort of still with my physics brain on uh, you could i mean if you wanted to you could write that m m subscript w with a little w there to, to clear <laughs> clarify that stuff so the water yeah yeah that could be very that could be very helpful just mm. to make sure we put because it is the all that is the water really it's the temperature change of the water it's the specific heat capacity of the water and it's the mass of the water mm. and that could be m subscript f but i suppose that's mw so the only other m is uh, the mass of the fuel mm. itself um yeah uh, and again i suppose you would you would clar um, students would have done calorimetry so they understand the process of it and um, the fact that there is a few assumptions made that all the heat released from the exothermic reaction goes 100% into heating up the water from yeah. that temperature and there's no amount of heat energy lost whatsoever uh, in that that's the assumption isn't it so 
Yeah, and, and you can often get a question, how does, um, which is more accurate, this method or calculating via Hess's law, via enthalpies of combustion and enthalpies of formation, which is the more accurate. And it's the Hess's law that's more accurate because there's uh, no energy losses in, in Hess's law. Oh, of course. Whereas here, there's um, there's an experimental error because of heat loss to surroundings and the equipment mm. and so on. Yeah. No, I like it. It's um, it's a really great topic, and uh, I mean, I sometimes cover uh, the starting bits of this at uh, GCSE. It's in some syllabuses, and mm. um, I, I just tend to start off with saying, well, the calories in your food worked out mm. a process called the metering or measuring of the calories and that's mm. uh, there's this uh, classic episode of the Simpsons where the chemistry teacher is burning one of his donuts <laughs> to mm. show how much energy is in that donut yeah. and it takes it to the Bunsen burner and Homer <laughs> Simpson <laughs> takes this massive scream like no um, because we are living in um calorie and calorie counting is is a popular word and expression in, uh, in day to day it's this is one of those great great mm. ideas in chemistry they can connect straight away to something they understand and some a word they've already heard and uh, yeah. yeah well it's it's exactly the same process as calculating the energy released by a donut as calculating the energy released by a fuel yeah yeah no uh, great topic because that's how that's how you work it out. It's all mm. all the different elements that uh, in this case you have join up to make you the fuel, and the fuel can be oxidized or in this, a combustion in this case, and you can yeah you can work that out. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, great topic. Um, yeah, look forward to uh, whatever your next uh, next video is. Okay, thanks, Atul. Great. Bye.